There's a problem I see amongst a lot of devotees, especially younger devotees. When they read the philosophy, they think, okay, if I become Krishna conscious, I will be like this. And as they experience Krishna consciousness, they're not like that. And they become upset about it, disturbed about it. They don't know how to deal with the fact that they're not as Krishna conscious as they expect they should be. So let me give an example. The easiest example, I'm not the body. Okay, I, I, I get that. I'm not the body. I join Krishna consciousness. I'm not the body, right? But what happens is, I'm a man. I'm attracted to the opposite sex because I'm a man. If I were a woman, I would be attracted to a man. I'm a man. I'm attracted to a woman. That means if I'm still at all attracted, it means I'm identifying with my body. I become ill. My service slows down. I start complaining about the aches and pains, the headaches, the fatigue, and so I'm being affected by my body. But I'm not my body, but I'm being affected by it. What's going on? I'm not my body, and I start to see after I'm doing devotional service for a while that I have certain desires that I need to fulfill, but I'm not the body. Why should I need to fulfill them? And so, you have, you have a hard time kind of adjusting to this reality. Wait a minute, I joined thinking I'm not the body. Now I see there's needs to fulfill. There's desires I haven't fulfilled. I'm still you know, concerned about how I look. I'm still concerned about how other people think about me. But I'm not the body. And so what happens as you, as you mature in Krishna consciousness is you start to understand that you can't realize these things overnight and you have to make adjustments according to where you're at. And so what we find is that a lot of devotees, before they realize that, they become extremely narrow-minded, even fanatical. And part of the problem we see historically is that disciples also often become more fanatical than their founders, their acharyas, their gurus. And, and what we see about Prabhupada is when a devotee would complain about not being self-realized, as we're talking here, not realizing what's in the philosophy, but, but acting in other ways. You would see that Prabhupada would just take it like, well, that's normal. You're a conditioned soul. You're trying to become self-realized. But for now, that's just normal. And we would think, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm so bad. You know, I, I, I know I'm not the body, but I still, you know, I want to get married, or I, I can't remain a brahmachari, or or I have a desire to have a home. What's wrong with me? You know, I, I left all these things to become a devotee. And the Prabhupada's looking at you thinking, the only thing wrong with you is that you think something's wrong with being you. That's what's wrong with you. This is just normal. What else is new? You have a physical body. You don't become self-realized just by reading a shloka in a book. But we see manifestations of this in gross ways and subtle ways, even as some people become more evolved and their expectations for themselves and others can sometimes be unrealistic. And when the unrealistic expectations are placed upon devotees, I've seen them feel very bad about just being who they are, feel very bad about not being overnight Krishna conscious, feel very bad about having material needs and desires. It's not a problem if you use them in Krishna consciousness. What the problem is not accepting the reality and becoming discouraged by the reality. The reality is real, right? Yeah, exactly. That's where you're at. It's real. You can't deny it. Doesn't mean I don't understand the philosophy. It doesn't mean I don't accept it. It just means acknowledging and accepting who I am where I'm at, which as devotees mature, they learn to do because after decades of living with yourself and realizing, oh, I've tried to come up to this level, but I always end up on this level. That's probably where I'm at, and that's probably what I need to deal with. The problem is the younger devotees, when they don't understand that, they get discouraged by realizing they're here instead of here because they thought they would be here, or they listen to classes, and it seems like saying, you should be here, and actually everybody's here, and you're the only one who's here, so there's something wrong with you. It's not like that. Everybody's here. Don't worry. Only very, very eleva elevated devotees are up here. And if you continue going, you will be up here. But until you're up here, you're here. And that's okay as long as you're moving up a little, 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 little bit. 
Wherever you start is all right. You will get there. Just don't worry. Just accept where you're at and move. I call this the, the burp point. And I've talked about this before. According to Ayurveda, when you're full, you will burp. And that, when you burp, don't eat anymore. You've had enough. So, we all need to eat a certain amount, some more, some less. So, what's your burp point? What do you need to be peaceful, to be balanced, to be satisfied materially so you can execute your devotional service? Where the renunciates need less. Grihastas need a little more. Brahmacharis need a little less. Even amongst the brahmacharis, some need more. Even amongst the renunciates, some need more. Some need less. Where do you burp? Before you burp, you're still hungry. So you take what you need. It's not a problem. This is what your mind, body needs. Take it. And now you can focus on Krishna. Don't get depressed just because you're not self-realized in three days. It will come, but it takes time. Until then, be who you are. Engage that in Krishna's service. Yeah.